for years, it was very easy to rely on Michael. Phil brought a belief that as great as Michael was, he couldn't do it all by himself. Phil had to sell Michael more than anybody, but all of us on this triangle offense. It was really just a system of play where everybody touched the ball, everybody had an equal opportunity. It was really instilling in us a belief that it was a team game. It's going to take all five of us to get over a team like the Pistons. As time went on, we saw the value in it. They taught us how to read the defense. If a pass was taken away here, the ball went to another spot. Here were the cuts that you made off of it. And it was unlike anything in the NBA at the time. That gave us a, an identity other than Michael. You know, Phil Swallis, Tex Winner, kept us to the grind in terms of trying to learn the offense. We all realized that we had a learning curve, whether it was growing up mentally or more physically, learning what we had to do to be more competitive and be more complete. I remember Michael telling me and BJ, we're no longer kids anymore. You guys are pros. Be in the gym, working on your games, and be ready to play. We started working out together as a team, and we became closer. For me, it was definitely to get more physically strong as well as Horace, and for Michael as well. The thing that nobody will ever really understand or appreciate is the practice floor. That's always been the sacred part of it because people couldn't get in there, you know, they couldn't see it every day and know what that meant. It's away from the lights, it's where you bond as a team. Everything was competition. It didn't matter if it's, you know, practice. It didn't matter if it was shooting free throws. The practice were very competitive and you know, those practices made us so much better and so much more comfortable from a game situation. When you're playing against the best players at their position every day, when you go out and play Utah, the Lakers, they're not as hard as what we see every day in practice. By game time, we were all as one. And when we came in this building, egos got checked in at the door. It was all about a we and not me. Our belief was, if we can get home court advantage, we can beat the Pistons. As we got into it, we got in a little rhythm in our role, and we ended up winning 61 games, and we started to gain some confidence. There was a physical issue. Bill was always the one that stood up. And he was also the guy that when we needed to kind of settle a game down, we could always throw him the ball in the post. And he was going to find a way to score, get to the free throw line. And he was still playing at that level at that time. Bill Cartwright, Paxson, those two guys, they were great leaders. They took us young players under their wings. If we weren't eating right, we heard about it. If we were staying out till we heard about it. They really had a good, you know, calming force of what we're doing. And, and they were well respected. We had just had a nice mix of, you know, our starters blended well, guys coming off the bench blended well. One thing that Phil stressed more than anything against Detroit was they're the physical bad boys. They want to beat you up. We're not built that way. Let's show our athleticism, our finesse. You know, you're playing against a team that knows what you're doing and know the difficulties that you're dealing with in terms of learning the offense. Pippen. Time is running out on this Detroit championship era. Chicago Bulls gunning for a sweep. It just absolutely came together in that playoff series against him. And we're set for the start of game one of the NBA championship series. We had a lot of jitters and nerves. We were playing against, you know, the world-renowned Lakers. We welcome you back to the forum. We didn't really have the fan support. It was a road game for us. We had to come together at the 12 players and the staff that was there, and it was really just up to us. The Bulls lead by seven. Final seconds, Magic's three-point attempt blocked. Pippen comes away with it, and the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. Michael Jordan has answered a couple of questions. There have been doubters over the years whether a team led by Jordan could win a championship. I want everybody to prosper from this whole event. You know, it, it took a team to get to this point. It's an honor to take this on behalf of a great organization and the wonderful fans of Chicago. We all as players really thank you all for your support. And we all want you to know that this one is for you. But well, we're going to be back here next year for another long struggle.
being defending champs, you tend to draw a little more attention from that. As a player, you embrace because you need other challenges going forward to stay motivated throughout the regular season. You know where you want to be at the end of the season, but how do you keep that motivation? How do you keep that edge? We stay competitive every night. We, we wanted to win every game. Focus on game to game and what we had to do to get better as a team. And the Bulls win it 99 to 94. I know that this game is just over, but in the back of your mind, there are some thoughts about the Portland Trailblazers. Not right now. We think about them over the weekend. You know, they were arguably the best team in the Western Conference. They had the athletes to match up with us. Rexler against Michael Jordan. This is a matchup that everybody wanted. Jordan again from three-point land. And a Jordan fires it in There's Jordan for three. Yes! I don't believe it. This place is pandemonium. He is hot. Three again. Oh, Michael's good again. That was a tough series. We had to come back here in game six. You know, they were up, I think, 16, 17 points going into the fourth quarter. You know, Phil Jackson put our younger players in because we were energy guys. He knew that we were not gonna get blown out if we were in the game because of our energy level. Those fans can get you hyped very quickly and get you back in the game. You can be down 10 points and you don't have any energy. And all of a sudden you make a little run, hit a basket, and that crowd noise and that energy starts to feed because it seemed like the sound went straight from the floor all the way up to the ceiling. It's an explosion. We cut the lead down and the momentum had completely changed in that game. Portland starts to panic a little bit. That was remarkable because we won at home. You know, we won in front of our crowd. As the season gets so tired and grinding, you know, you think you're headed to another shoot around. A lot of times, Phil would just surprise us with different things, taking us to a park, or taking us to do yoga. You know, those were just great times. BJ just holds, bothered by Price, dumped to Michael. Six, five, four. Michael Strip got it back. Three, two. Michael falls, fires. Yeah! He does it again! The ball's wet. He looks at the crowd. The Eastern Conference was much more physical. New York was a hard hitting physical series. We felt kind of liberated against Phoenix. Not only do they win, but now they're winning every year. This is an incredible departure for Chicago. That everybody in sports is looking toward Chicago as the model, as the team to be most feared, most respected, most admired, and most copied. Because there was excellence every night, because of the publicity that this team got during those years, propelled the league into something that it had never been before. When I lose the sense of motivation and the sense to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. He's the greatest player on the planet. The game was different, the rules were different, it was a much more physical league. It was a grind because we had with three straight years, the Olympics, Dream Team, and so the pressure of score 30 or more points every night, to go up against teams that you know are geared to stop you. I don't know if anyone could have ever been able to withstand that. Scotty pretty much put the franchise on his back and showed why he's one of the top 50 players of all time. Scotty got it. Brandon will try and catch him. No, he won't. And won't. <laughs> no, he won't. I feel like I was still young and still learning and growing and developing in the game. We had just brought in a bunch of guys. It was when Steve Kerr came in, Luke Longley, and then Bill Wennington. We still had Billy Cartwright, Paxson was there that first year, so we had a lot of great veteran leadership. Bob comes into Tony, look out, it's online! Yeah! 
Bulls win it! Kukoc with the lifesaver! Somehow that group kind of found a new energy and Scotty had an MVP type of year. The word that Michael Jordan was officially returning to the NBA was made at about 1 o'clock Central Time today. He was a little different player. He had trained for baseball. His body was a little bit different. He was a little stronger, lower body, and didn't have that as much pop as he had. In typical Michael fashion, he knew how to adapt his game. You know, he became kind of a post-up player and hit those fadeaways. The newness of the building was much more cavernous than the smaller, more intimate Chicago Stadium. I think they grew to love the United Center. Michael played 13 games in a regular season with us, and we made the playoffs. It's all over, and the Bulls' season comes to an end. I think that really set the stage, at least for Michael. For a while, we had a lot of hope within ourselves. We believed in ourselves, and uh, if we didn't believe in ourselves, we wouldn't have been to this point. Michael, being the person that he is, stepping up to challenges and not liking to lose, came back the next year with a vengeance. With his dedication to the game, he kind of forces everyone else to come along or get out. Dennis was new that year. He had lost Horace Grant and his rebounding and his defense at that power forward spot. So Dennis fit that bill perfectly and really above and beyond for what Dennis did. When the lights turn on, he gave everything he had. There is the athleticism of Dennis Rodman. Doesn't give up on the ball. Ron Harper stepped up. Tony Kuka really developed in the previous two years. Really, everyone, that team really meshed so well as a team. And that was one of Phil's philosophies, that the wholeness and the balance of everything has to be together. And I think that's one of the best teams where truly, I think everyone liked everyone and wanted to be around everyone all the time. Phil would break us up every now and then and pin those two guys against each other because they're really the only ones who could push each other to the limits. But everyone else had to fight to keep up with them. Every night you step on the floor, teams were really gunning for you. The in warm-ups, you could tell sometimes where teams just, before the game started, kind of succumbed to, wow, we don't have a chance. And other teams, we could see guys really roughing it up, getting ready, and like, okay, we're gonna have a little battle tonight. Roughing, has it blocked by Longley. Oh, what a play to Pippen. It seemed like nothing went wrong that whole year. We won a lot of games because of the closeness. Nothing rattled us. We were more polished from the neck up. We thought the game out a little bit more. We read each other more. We communicated better on the court. We had a great group of guys in terms of our bench, guys that you know were professionals in terms of taking care of their bodies and being ready for the back-to-backs. 72 and 10 season was absolutely incredible and how dedicated the team and coaching staff were not necessarily to achieve that record but to make sure that they were ready to win another championship. First 72 and 10 year was special, but by the end of it, the media attention was great. And then for the next two years, it just stayed the same. That group was completely different than our group. It, it was more of a rock and roll show. We called it the Beatles with Michael, Scotty, and Dennis. There was always, no matter what time of night you arrived in a city, there'd still be 100, 200, 300 people standing in front of the hotel. People are, are bringing their kids out just for a chance to see Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. I never dreamt of basketball being that important to people's lives. It was just a road show for us, and the road show became really good because we were kicking teams' butt along the way. They had to compete every night because every other team was giving them their absolute best. Some of the criticism 
was that anybody could win with Michael, and anybody could win with Michael, Scotty, and Dennis. That's not necessarily true. The genius of Phil was his ability to get these guys, even though there were so many stars, to play together collectively with a common goal in mind at the end of the year. That was where Phil was so great. Phil did a real good job in the latter parts of our careers of really holding us back and keeping us hungry for the game. Not clock at five, Pippen for three. Yes! Well, they were smart. They had smart players and guys that knew how to play. It was tough to match up against them. Our stuff worked really well against them, but they had the one guy that could come out there and put you to sleep pretty quick. Just a tremendous competitor. Five on the 24. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Five seconds remaining in regulation. The inbound. I can think of very few, if any, nights where you weren't excited to go into the building because there was so much energy everywhere you went. It becomes a, a community celebration. Spring in Chicago is built around Bulls games. Jordan trying to beat the clock on the other end. Pull up three. Yeah. Jordan, honestly, he was mentally like he was in 92, 93. Again, he was done, and he needed another break. Phil, you know, titles that last season, 97, 98, the last dance. And we're going to do this last dance together. Those who were lucky enough to watch had a sense that they were witnessing something special that they may never have a chance to witness again. Here comes Chicago, 17 seconds. Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. Stopped it. Harper's on him, behind the screen. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship, and it's their second three-peat. Oh my God, that was beautiful. What a beautiful. Michael and the Chicago Bulls are why the NBA became a global entity. It really became the most amazing phenomenon in the history of American sports. You've got a great opportunity to step in there and win a city that is crying for a winner. Perhaps you can turn that Bulls thing around. What do you think? Hopefully uh, I can go in and contribute and maybe turn it around. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Hey Bulls fans, this is Chuck Swirsky. That was a great video, and for more videos, check them out right here.